month, we begin today and our week ahead into almost one service, even though it happens different days. So today is Palm Sunday, and then Thursday is Monday Thursday service with communion, that's at 8 p.m., and then Friday is Good Friday service, and that's at 7 o'clock p.m., and then Sunday morning will be Easter as we celebrate the conclusion of our Holy Week, and before the Easter service, there will be cake and coffee to celebrate the confirmation and first communion of Allie and Lily. So please come a little beforehand that service to help celebrate that wonderful time in our church. And the Easter service is at 10.30. And with Easter in mind, you'll see some posters around. This is the last Sunday if you would like to order your Lily, Easter lilies. So please do so at the foyer table right outside these doors. And the council is looking for two more members. And so please consider that in your hearts. If this is something that um, you feel passionate about or um, you know someone that would be good at it, kind of give them a little nudge and see if they would be willing to do so. Um, Dan in the back will be happy to speak with you or that person you're nudging there. Um, we're so grateful for those who serve on that um, committee and, and be kind of the eyes and the ears of the congregation. So thank you so much for your consideration of that. I believe that's all of our announcements. Any announcements I missed? All right, then let's pause for a moment of silence as we prepare to worship our Lord. Now, as God has greeted us, let us greet one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have 
mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power of the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who live with their tongues confess that you, Jesus, the Lord, and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson this morning comes from Isaiah 50, verses 4 through 9, and this is on page 568 of the Pew The image of the servant of God is one of the notable motifs in the book of Isaiah. Today's reading describes the mission of the servant whom early Christians associated with Jesus. Like Jesus, the servant does not strike back at his detractors, but trust in God's steadfast love. Now the reading from Isaiah 50, beginning with verse 4. The Sovereign Lord has given me his words of wisdom, so that I know what to say to all these weary ones. Morning by morning, he wakens me and opens my understanding to his will. The Sovereign Lord has spoken to me, and I have listened. I do not rebel or turn away. I give my back to those who beat me, and my cheeks to those who pull out my beard. I do not hide from shame, for they mock me and spit in my face. Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be dismayed. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone, determined to do his will, and I know that I will triumph. He who gives me justice is near. Who will dare to oppose me now? Where are my enemies? Let them appear. See, the Sovereign Lord is on my side. The Word of God, words of life. Thanks be to God. Now please join in the responsive reading from Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in distress. My sight is blurred because of my tears. My body and soul are withering away. Jesus, every knee will bow 
in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of God, words of life. your growth, your learning, 
enabling you to pursue the things that are set before you with confidence and clarity and purpose. Actually being liberated from whatever has impacted our life. All of our lives. We all have experienced that personal connection to freedom in our daily lives. Whether it be each and every day or that sudden moment that you remember, that you reflect on. And these stories that you recall in your life help you to notice these moments of true freedom. What does it mean for Christ to untie a cult in our story for today? In Mark, Jesus instructs his disciples to go into the village ahead of him and untie a colt that has never been ridden. This seems like a very small detail, but it holds this deep spiritual part of our journeys. Untying a colt signifies freedom, a liberation of sorts, a release. It symbolizes the breaking of bonds both physically and spiritually. Just as Jesus liberated the cult from its tether, he also came to free you, free all of us, from the bondage of sin and death. And by instructing his disciples to untie the cult, Jesus demonstrates the importance of surrendering control the owner of the cult could have easily resisted and refused, but instead he willingly released the cult to the service of the Lord. Similarly, we are called to see our lives as life with Jesus, trusting in his divine plan and guidance. And in this reading, it recounts that the disciples followed the lead of Jesus' instructions, not despite fully understanding the purpose behind it, but they carried out his command. Jesus' disciples' first response reflects their trust in Jesus' authority. Now, they didn't always follow in this correct manner. Same with you and with me. But it's an example of what it means to be free in Christ to follow the lead of the one who guides us into the right path. They didn't question his instructions, but they acted in faith, knowing that he was their Lord and Master. Like the disciples, we are called to follow Jesus' commands, even when we don't fully comprehend them. This is the expression of our faith in acknowledging God's will. It's almost as if we are, too, preparing the way. As the disciples brought this cult to Jesus, they paved the way for his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. This humble mode of transportation fulfills the prophecy of Zechariah, the significance of Jesus' identity as the awaited Messiah. And Jesus' choice of transportation underscores his humility and meekness. Despite being the king of kings, he enters Jerusalem, not on a majestic steed, but on a humble colt, demonstrating the upside-down kingdom of God. Where greatness is found, there is servanthood. Where greatness is found, there is servanthood. And not only a colt, Riding into town on such a donkey as this, it was one that had never been ridden before. One that had never been ridden before. The path was prepared. The crowd's response to Jesus' entry, laying their cloaks and palm branches on the road, signify their recognition of him as king. This is Palm Sunday waving our palms and placing them on the road from our hearts and our lives, acknowledging that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. 
Beyond every moment, we have felt liberated in our lives. This spiritual awakening from God is the experience of actual true freedom in all things. A deep sense of awakening and connection to the King of Kings. The King that rides in on a donkey. Far greater than any freedom that we have ever known or that we have ever experienced. This is because of Christ the King. And as we reflect on the untying of the cult, and Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, we are reminded of the importance of following with humility and walking with Christ. A daily reminder that we can release the reins of control and trust this divine guidance, the true freedom that we receive. And as we prepare the way of the King in our hearts and our lives, welcoming Him with open arms and proclaiming Him as our Lord and Savior, we see Christ riding in on a donkey, this humble act of servanthood, to set you free finally and forevermore. And that is the good news. Church, the communion of 
trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Renew your good creation and protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters, scientists, arborists, gardeners, and river keepers. We pray for the health of pollinating insects, songbirds, and native plants. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Establish peace and justice among the nations. Hold to account any with authority to judge others. Grant that courts, legislatures, and local governments will serve with integrity and compassion. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. Watch over those who are ill, facing surgery, taking treatments, or who are struggling. Be especially with Kathy, Pat and Howard, Don, Terry, Jane, Celia, Mary Jo, and the Burroughs family, and for all those that we now speak aloud or in our hearts. Make a way for refugees and asylum seekers. Reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care that they may know your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Give energy and joy to our pastors, deacons, worship leaders, and musicians. Bless baptismal candidates, their sponsors, Emmanuel's confirmants, who will be confirmed next Sunday, Allie Hansen and Lily Whitmer, and our hardworking teachers. Watch over those who travel to be with their families on Easter Sunday. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Blessed one, our times are in your hand. Sustain us in discipleship throughout our lives and receive us into everlasting life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace and receive the prayers of our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. So anyway, I think it would be a good investment if we can if we can pull the money together. 
And I did go before the church council last week and got permission to do this. So they, I am sanctioned by the church council. I would never go do something like this without asking. Um, let's see here. Probably the most important about the instrument on what the, we were look, would be looking at. It's all made in Pennsylvania, Mackenzie, Pennsylvania, where that organ was made 35 years ago. Um, it is the, in, the, in their middle, they have a low, medium, and middle line. This is the two manual, two keyboard instrument in the middle line. The lower price line, you can get a cheaper one, all the parts are made in China. So we're, I would not, you know, and I looked at them and they just, they're just not, not very good. So anyway, it's, it's I think like 98 or 99 percent made in in Pennsylvania. So I did contact the Allen Organ representative, and he's going to be here after Easter on the second to look everything over and look over what we might get for a trade-in on this one. Um, one other important point to this presentation is there's no way, and we can't, and I won't. We cannot order the thing until every dollar's in the fund because it takes about five months to get it uh, built. They're all custom built. They're built to order, and that would be right not to not to do it that way. Uh, I've been suggested that we go ahead and order, and then I said, no, we can't do that. You know, that would be putting us out on a limb that we might we might fall off of. So anyway, I have a picture of it up here, and if you all have any questions. Come and see me. Um, I'll be giving you another presentation when I get a firm price on it and a price on the trade-in. And I've got a few more phone calls to make on the memorial. Uh, Marilyn and I are working on that. Because uh, let me tell you, congregation, some of those memorials have been in that account for years. And I'm talking 20, 25 years. And it, the way I look at it, it's kind of disrespectful to the family not to use that for something that we can use. So, anyway, um, like I say, I'll, I'll make another announcement here in a couple weeks when I get more information. And in the meantime, don't be shy. Spread the news around that that fund's open. And we'll see how we get along with it. And I'm praying. I'm, I have a lot of faith that it's going to turn out fine. So, yeah. So, Pastor, I think I'm done talking. So, she's going to miss mission. Thank you all. And I think we can all agree we're so grateful for the, your ministry and music, Steve. So thank you for that. You know, you know this, Pastor Lisa. I can always talk. <laughs> I, got, I got the talking gene from my dad. So thank you.